let's take a look at global sea surface temperatures and what the seasonal cycle of solar radiation um, and the tilt of the earth actually do for the surface of the world ocean. So when we looked at this topic earlier, we know that we, we looked at it in a little bit different way. We didn't actually explore how heating of the surface of the ocean gives rise to a distribution of sea surface temperatures. And that's what we want to look at now. And we want to talk about SST or sea surface temperatures. That's what SST stands for. If we look at satellite data, and this is um, some been extracted from satellite data, here's sort of an average of sea surface temperatures in the month of January across the entire globe. Of course, colder temperatures are in the blues and purples. The warmer temperatures are in the oranges and reds. And as you might expect, the tropics are the warmest and the polar environments are the coldest. But there's some subtleties here. We see in the equatorial Pacific, we actually have this tongue of cooler water. And again, when we get into chapter eight, uh, excuse me, chapter nine, and talk about ocean circulation, what we'll discover is that this cooler tongue of water is due to something called upwelling. Here we also have some cooler water up against the west coast of the United States and this of, the, of South America. And this has to do with circulation currents moving from the poles up along the coast of uh, Chile here in South America. So there's some subtle differences, but not anything totally unexpected. Of course, in sea surface temperatures, you, again, you can see that it's warmest in the equator, coldest in the poles. If we look at the long wave radiation in the, uh, the winter time, as we have in this figure, it gives us some sense of, excuse me, this is short wave radiation uh, in figure 822 here. It gives us some sense of the heating of the world ocean and where that heat comes from. And again, this is a, a detail, but just to remind you that it's the sun that's heating the ocean and that's what gives rise to the distributions that we see. So we see should see some similarities even though these maps aren't exactly um, the same. But here we see most of the heating occurring below the equator in the winter and you should really be able to explain why. Because we talked about the seasonal cycle of solar radiation and you should remember again the highest heating is these white colors here. You should remember where sunlight is hitting the most during this period of time. If we look at summertime, we see that this water here, the, the hot water has been distributed further north. So go back and compare those two maps. Here we have a displacement of the warm water towards the south in what is our winter time. And here we have a displacement of the warm water towards the north in what is our summertime. Of course, it's winter time in Australia in July. Okay, so we have displacements of warm sea surface water temperatures and of course as well you can see a reversal. The coldest waters in July are in the southern ocean versus in the Arctic which previously had the coldest temperatures. Okay, so pay some attention to these figures. You can't just whip by the figures and not pay attention because there's some subtleties of information there. And again, remember, a picture is worth a thousand words or so. And were you to have such figures on a test, I would expect you to be able to explain it because you understand something about the seasonal cycle of solar radiation. And by understanding that, you should be able to explain the different patterns of sea surface temperatures as well as the different patterns of shortwave radiation on the surface of the Earth. So keep that in mind.